Today, most people know Gary Vaynerchuk for his larger than life personality, his garage sailing. Brought me so much happiness. I had to get his jersey for two bucks. And his explicit language. Who the fuck? Do you think you are? But us wine geeks remember him for his time at Wine Library TV. Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. Gary was instrumental in my wine journey and I'm gonna share some of my favorite moments. I almost feel like Portugal has slipped me a roofie. From his Wine Library TV videos right now. You look at how good Gary Vaynerchuk is on social media. I messed up in my 20s. You're spending any time judging yourself about your 20s yeah. is a waste of time. And you forget everybody started somewhere. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Wine Library TV. I am Gary Vaynerchuk. Looks kind of like my first video of exotic wine travel. Hello and welcome to exotic wine travel. Gary was really the OG wine YouTuber. He was never afraid to call a spade of spade. Joseph Phelps Insignia 2014. This is really disappointing to say. It really struck me like, this wine should really still be $39.99, not 200 bucks a bottle. Gary was really innovative, inventing cool terms like, ah, the oak monster. And giveaways to really stay connected to his community. Here is the wristband. It's nice, you're gonna like it. You know, I like shooting it at Mott. Here are some of my favorite moments from Wine Library TV. Gary wasn't shy about sharing what he really felt about wine. With a score of a 68, and I'm really worried that it's California, but the obnoxious one we just dealt with, in my opinion, is 68 points. <laughs> this is just so interesting how palettes go. This may be one of the most interesting results in Wine Library TV history. I'm not kidding. The Mount Eden, 2005 Chardonnay, $43. I just scored this wine 68 points for my palate. Do you know what this is scored? 96 points, Robert Parker. And that's all you have to know. Back then, that was still when Robert Parker, you know, was towards the end of his prime, but still in his prime. And the fact that Gary was willing to <laughs> Almost 30 points off on a well pe pedigreed Chardonnay. I have to admit, I'm a big fan of that Chardonnay. Something that hopefully I'd like to see happen a little bit more in the wine world. Gary always championed high value for money wines, and I think that's why he was so popular. Tramine, uh, 2008 Pinot Bianco. I am feeling this wine. It is $12. It is 91 plus points. I'm, I'm going there. I'm not even, you know, my, I'm going to go there. I'm not going to hold back. I'm going 91 plus points. This is spectacular wine. This is what the wine world's all about. I continue to yell and scream that there's stuff going on out there and you don't have to pay 80 bones. You know, eight to $15 a bottle can get you great wine if you fight hard and find it. And this Mott and the Vayner Nation, this is the kind of wine that you need to go out and find. It's very good. It's from an amazing area in the world that does not get enough attention and it brings serious thunder. Drinks amazing by itself, just amazing by itself, and with food, it's spectacular. Give me some squid ink pasta, give me some prosciutto and melon, give me, you know, anything. A light salad frisé, a little egg in there. Mm. This is brilliance, 91 plus point. You know what, 92 points. 92 points, brilliant, great job. More wine should taste like this, awesome. <laughs> the wine he was talking about there was Turlan uh, Pinot Bianco from Alto Adige in Italy. He was 100% right. Alto Adige, I think, is still an underappreciated, undervalued part of the wine world. I'm a huge Pinot Bianco fan. I could drink Pinot Bianco from Alto Adige all day, every day. Gary also shares a love for wines from a country that I absolutely love. The Esparro Reserva, you know, it's like a dessert bar exploded in my mouth, and I appreciated it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes when you have something explode in your mouth, you are not appreciative. In this scenario, you are. This wine has minerality, structure, terroir, balance, length, spectacular. 92 points, $15. That means, room, 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 drive. That was driving. Drive to your local wine shop, the Reserva. There is something going on in Portugal. 
I almost like, Ma, you know what's crazy? I almost feel like Portugal has slipped me a roofie. Like, I'm just always going, <laughs> oh, I like the white wine. <laughs> Rufal and basically the date rape drug, <laughs> which I've never had or I've never been spiked with. I'm not, I don't look good enough for somebody to want to date rape me. But <laughs> anyways, I love Portugal, the Portuguese wine, Espera. it's not $15 anymore. I think it's around $19, 20 bucks. I've been to the estate before. Uh, that wine offers tremendous value for money in Portugal in general, especially when you go to the country, you visit the country, I real, I'm thinking, how the heck are the farmers making money with how cheap those, the wines are? I think Portugal is the only country in the world that I've been to where you go to the supermarket and you can get good quality wine that's cheaper than the bottled water. Even the really inexpensive stuff in Portugal is at least decent. And it's not only value for money wine in Portugal, there are really high level, high quality, age worthy wines. You get some guys in the Duro are doing fantastic work. If you're a big fan of things like Barolo Barbaresco wines with a little more tannin, look at Bajada uh, using the great Baga. If you like softer reds, look to the Alentejo. If you're more into maybe some terroir driven whites, I'm a big fan of those in the Dow. I share Gary's love for Portugal. Brilliant wine country, amazing people. And of course, Gary did two episodes on the wines of Croatia, obviously a country which I'm biased towards because I spend a lot of time there. This is actually one of the episodes when I saw it way back then that made me actually want to come visit. And finally, the wine that I've definitely been most excited, uh, Zlatan Otok, 2004, 35 US dollars on this Plavak Mali. Yes! You know what? It's been a long time since we really, really, really did something on the Thunder Show. We're about to do something on the Thunder Show. I am completely shocked by this wine. Guys, this wine is sensational. Downright, fundamentally sensational. Huge fruit. I. This is probably one of the better wines that I, I mean, you know what? I'm switching seats again, Ma. I'm that excited. Get me over here now. I'm just moving out of excitement. This is no joke, probably the one, one of the more interesting new wines I've had in a long time. This wine is boatload fruit, boatload of action, very delicious, extremely well made. This is an absolute killer wine. I love it, I love it. Tobacco, stinky bomb on the finish, which is great, but still covered by so much fruit, that becomes a second tier flavor. New world, old world, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it strong. I mean, I'm going 93 plus on this wine. I think it is remarkable. It is worth seeking out. This is the moment, right this second, that I've come to realize Croatia is on the scene. It's coming. And the next five years, tons of you, tons of you, tons of them, tons of people out there will be drinking. Not tons, <laughs> but the smart ones, the people that get it, are gonna be drinking Croatian wine. <laughs> Croatia is getting a lot more notoriety for its wines, especially because there's so many tourists, so many visitors that come here. Still not a lot of people know about Croatian wine in general, but the wines are of really good quality. This grape he's talking about, this producer, Plavac Mali from Zlatnotak. Zlatnotak is one of the original uh, independent wineries in the country. Sad thing, the, when I first visited this estate, when I was preparing to write my book about Croatian wine, the owner, Zlatan, died maybe just a few weeks before I first visited, so that's quite sad. I never got to meet him in person, uh, but this wine in particular is lovely. So, Gary, thanks for inspiring me to go to Croatia. Gary also shares my love for a grape, a Nebbiolo, and a region, Piedmont, Italy. This is going to be the grape that people are championing, like this. Like, you know how they do that? I did it. Yeah. Uh, this comes from Prodotori del Barbaresco, the 2005 Rabaya Reserva. Barbaresco, look at this label. This is just class, I mean, just classic labeling. So, I'm really, you know, intrigued by the fact that over the last five years, I haven't really put my balls on the line on any varietal. If you really watch the show and look at the scores, you can't really tell where I stand. I, I think it's tough for me to commit, tough to put the ring on the finger, but I'm gonna do it. Nebbiolo, Lizzie, don't watch this. Nebbiolo, you know, <laughs> will you marry me? I I'm gonna tell you right now that I think Nebbiolo is the grape of the next three years. It's going to be discovered on a bigger scale. People are gonna recognize it's ridiculous. Let's even call it ridiculous <laughs> value structure. This wine is so smooth, so structured, beautiful fruit. Every part of my body right now wants to put my thumb in here, get in my car, drive over there, eat it, and pound this from the bottle, like this. That's how much I like this wine.
And those are a lot of reasons to like Nebbiolo. But uh, looking back, I'm so impressed that he made a couple of these calls. This is a varietal, Nebbiolo, and a part of the world, Barolo, um, Piedmonte, uh, that I think is going to continue to explode. I am of the belief in the next decade, in the 2010 to 2020 run, Barolo puts itself on an elevated platform and becomes really the place that most people put and go, you know, red burgundy and then Barolo and then maybe Bordeaux. I have this inkling, this itching, this feel, this vibe that Barolo becomes really sought after in the next decade. He was spot on right with that. You look at the prices of Barolo and their availability. The prices have went up. The demand went up. Obviously, supply is going down. You look at iconic wines like Contero's Monfortino. I think now it's retailing for $1,000 a bottle upon release. Barolo is super hot. I still think Barbaresco, you can get find some good deals. But a lot of collectors, a lot of people are actually moving to Alto Piemonte North to those Nebbiolo wines because Barolos and Barbarescos, the prices are shooting up. Good call on that, Gary. I love on the show, too, he tasted wines from all over the place. One of my favorite episodes is when he discovered this wine made, I think, by a community college in Oklahoma. This is the Chapel Creek Winery, Oklahoma, Centennial Cabernet Sauvignon Meritage, Meritage, <laughs> Meritage Reserve. This moment is exactly, exactly why I'm in the wine industry. Let's rewind. This is a wine made by a community college in Oklahoma. I'm going to repeat it for you. This is a wine made by a community college in Oklahoma with Oklahoma grapes. And I'm going to tell you something right now before I get crazy and get like remembered for this statement for the rest of my life. Let me just taste this one more time. This is why I do this show. I just tasted a wine from Oklahoma made by college students in Oklahoma with Oklahoma grapes that I'm going to tell you at 15 bones beats the living snot out of 90% of the California Red Meritage wines that I've had under 20 US bones in the last 36 months. That was a lot of numbers. Did you follow that? I'm telling you right now, I am baffled right now. <laughs> I know me especially, when I find a wine in, in a, a lot of these emerging countries I go to, or even well-known countries with lesser-known regions or maybe lesser-known producers, if I find a wine that's just bringing absurd quality, absurd value for money, this is exactly how I feel. Okay, to finish off this multi-course meal of Wine Library TV videos, we will go to dessert wines, and I love Gary's take on this because this is exactly how I feel. Dessert wines are really magical wines. They're wines you tend to love when you first get into wine, uh, and then really you really appreciate them as your palate develops and you really get into wine. I'm a huge dessert wine fan. They're great, great after-dinner drinks. They're great to drink by themselves. They go great with foie gras, which is one of my favorite foods, um, though you can only eat so much. It's just a tremendous wine in general, the whole concept of a sweet wine, when they're done right, and I'm not talking about Mad Dog or Boone's Farm, I'm talking about well-made dessert wines, are just really amazing. And so, you know, it's funny, when you first get into red wines and white wines, again, serious wines, you think of sweet wines as lower or not as powerful or not as serious, because you think of the white Zinfandels and things like that. But some of the greatest wines in the world, Chateau de Cam or the Tokais from Hungary, are the most expensive and the most sought after wines in the world. For me now, that's where my palate is. I am obsessed with the world's great sweet wines. I think it's the most magical transformation from grape into wine. The amount of complexity there is in aged sweet wine is just mind boggling to me. I think it's also because in the last couple of years I've been spending a lot of time in these great dessert wine regions, uh, Comandaria and Cyprus, a lot of time in Tokai and Hungary. I'm obsessed with those wines. I've been going to the Duro a lot in the last couple of years, uh, drinking a lot of ports, which I used to not like, but I'm really starting to get into uh, the south of France and the Roussillon with Vendue Naturels, like Bagnols, Rivasols. If you're looking to try something unique and different, you got to try some of these great sweet wines, and they're incredibly undervalued, especially, I'm going to speak with Tokai, it's probably the, the, the region I'm most knowledgeable in. I've never seen a person taste a sweet Tokai for the first time, and their eyes not go, Ooh. 
So sweet wines are a great way to finish up the meal and a great way to finish up this little wine library TV binge. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos like this come out. And if you're thinking about what to watch next, I'm going to throw something up right here. Cheers.